Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Zach here with Secrets of Longevity and Humans.com as well as ZachMartinKillware.com. I've been getting a lot of responses to some past videos of mine where I talk about the detriments of a high fruit or high sugar, high simple sugar diet. Um, there is one individual in particular that I'm wishing to respond to with this video, but I do want it to also be very general to anyone. Uh, the information is general, I'm not going to be directly responding to certain points, or I'm not trying to come from a place of attack either. I'm treating this as a friendly debate. I don't respond to people who come from a place of personal attack when I see that starting to happen. If I happen to be debating with someone, I drop the issue because, you know, we're in health and we discuss things to reach a better place. When people start attacking each other, um, in the past, I believe I've been in that place and I think it's shameful to go there. Um, when you start attacking someone, it really shows that you're so dogmatic about what it is that you perceive to be correct that you're unwilling and unwavering to change from that. People treat health often like religion. And as we know with religion, or even beliefs, spiritual beliefs, any sort of uh, thing that's more ephemeral, which, of course, we can have these beliefs, and people have the right to have those, but it's not something that you can debate because it's ephemeral. It's one's own experience. It's based on that. There's no fact when it comes to which god is right, which deity is the right one, etc. Of course, some people will have their opinions about that. But when it comes to diet, there are things... It's a scientific thing. There's actual processes in the human body that get affected by diet, there are definitely dogmas in diet that get proven over, disproven or proven over time. But we can't get stuck in these ruts and be so heady about it that we end up clashing and really getting so frustrated with each other that it just stresses us out. It's not helpful in the, in the least because we're all on paths of reaching greater levels of health and we all have different opinions. And although I believe myself to be very good at this point at being very level-headed and being able to debate the facts, I do not respond to people that end up going into these places of personal attack or getting into petty arguments um, that don't really add up. So on that note, yes, there's been some very in good things brought up that I'd like to address in this video. And what I would say is that um, there are a lot of blanket statements, and this can be in any uh, dietary system. There are blanket statements that get talked about because people in those areas of study learn all these facts about something, and then instead of every time they talk having to pinpoint all these little things which can make people confused and not listen because it gets too boring, we're, we're citing all these little scientific studies, etc., they create blanket statements. However, some people create blanket statements without the facts, and those blanket statements don't aren't able to stand up to the facts, and that's some of the stuff I'd like to point out in this video here today. So one of the first things that I'd like to make clear is the fact that, and yeah, that is a fact, that low-calorie diets do lead to longer health. And out of the top eight longevity cultures, and I know I talk about these a lot, and I haven't done videos on each of these cultures yet, and that's soon to come, but if we look at these cultures, they all have diets on a daily average. This was compiled by National Geographic. This isn't just someone going off saying, oh, they're not eating very much food. They must be eating a low-calorie diet. They actually examined their diets, and they found, on average, between all these major longevity cultures, they're eating, on average, 18,000 calories a day. Some are less, some are closer to 2,000. But, you know, it's a far cry from eating 3,000-plus calories a day if you're an athlete. My personal experience with eating lower calories has been very successful. I'm not doing drastic cut in my calories. I'm just naturally eating when I'm hungry and because I'm eating a raw food diet, I actually am not as hungry and I can get by with less. So naturally that lends itself to that. Um, I eat on average maybe 18,000 calories a day. That's in that range that these longevity cultures eat. And I'm the same weight I've been when I was eating 2,300 calories a day or even 2,500 calories a day when I was actually trying to bulk up. I was eating like large quantities of grain on a daily basis when I was eating more cooked food. And yeah, I've cut my calories by a third, and I'm the same weight, I've gained strength, I'm in better health. I have the same energy, I don't get tired. So the, yes, I don't go out running marathons, so the whole uh, 
point this person was trying to make is that people wanting to do ultra marathons as if that leads to better health, um, they need this high fruit diet to be able to do that. And yeah, I'd say, yeah, they probably do. Um, when I went backpacking in the Yukon or in Alaska and went across the Chilku Trail, um, we had a substantial amount of dried fruit and other simple sugars. Some of it, this was before I was raw, I was eating like sort of energy bar type things. And it was handy to have and you don't get the negative effects of eating that simple sugar because you're so active. You're walking and hiking and almost on a verge of jog because you're vigorous hiking all day for several days. And um, I could eat a ton of calories and not get the detrimental effects of that because your body's burning it off. Now the idea behind low calorie diets and the research behind that, some people say, oh it hasn't been proven yet in humans so we don't want to take risks. Well you know what, if you were to take smoking as an example, say they hadn't proven smoking cuts your lifespan down yet. You know, they, um, yet they were doing clinical trials on animals, mice, um, other animals in cages, monkeys, etc. Unfortunately, that's the way some studies are done. But, um, so they have these animals that are smoking, um, it shows that their cardiovascular function is diminished, they're coughing up black tar, they have lung problems, and in the end of these animals' lives, because they live shorter lives, that's how they study them and get the extrapolate these facts, is that they live shorter lifespans on average than the controls. Well, some people would conclude that, you know what, uh, in humans that's not, um, that's not, uh, we don't know yet from the long-term studies in humans on smoking in this pretend scenario, so we don't know if it's actually going to be the case in humans that they're going to be affected by smoking. Yet in the trials we see so far in the humans, we see, uh, like the animals, they were getting reduced cardiovascular function, reduced lung function, uh, increased lung cancer, and they're coughing up black tar. So there's that parallel between the animals and the animals were living shortened lives, but because the study hasn't been completed in humans, showing that they've lived shorter lives, we're going to assume that, you know, there is the possibility that it doesn't cut your life short, and some people are going to use that as an excuse to smoke longer. Well, you know, this is a hypothetical situation. And hearing that, you might think, no, there's no way if I heard that amount of research, I would quit smoking if I happened to be a smoker, and I had the logic and self-respect to be able to do that and get those facts. Well, the same thing is true with calorie restriction. They don't haven't completed the long-term human studies yet in terms of knowing exactly how long this is going to increase humans' lifespans, but they've done the animal trials on a variety of different species, and in every single case, it's increased the lifespan by cutting the calories back, they see the effects it has on their physiology with reducing diabetes, cancer rates, cardiovascular disease, and all these other diseases of me metabolism. And then they see humans, the studies they're doing on humans, they're cutting the rates of those diseases in the humans thus far, but because the studies have only been going on a couple decades maybe, those humans aren't at the end of their lifespan yet, so we can't say 100% that they're not living as long, but you know what? It's the same situation with the smoking. We see 95% sure that, or even 99.5% sure that humans are going to live longer with calorie restriction, but it's not quite 99.9% .9 or 100% certain. So, you know, people want to keep living their lifestyles and make excuses so they ignore the scientific facts for that reason. Well, you know what? If you understand what I'm saying, you'll understand that calorie restriction is actually very beneficial for your health and it is the only, it is considered in the scientific community to be the only thing that increases your longevity. So I'm really being intense with this delivery because, you know, you're, you're presenting facts here that aren't measuring up. You're just making assumptions saying these things that you don't have any facts for and I'm giving you the facts and if you want to ignore those facts that's fine, but I'm just presenting them and you can make do with them what you want.